breaking news and video published to his Sussex Royal Instagram page, Prince Harry has just publicly addressed the decision by him and his wife Meghan to leave their royal lives behind. Watch this. It's a race to stop a deadly virus from spreading. Passengers touching down in the U.S. on flights from central China now Retired Los Angeles action. Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. It happened this morning. The chopper reportedly went down just before 10 a.m. local time, according to fire, uh, the fire department out there in Calabasas, California. That's northwest of Los Angeles. In the last half hour, the U.S. Senate has found President Trump not guilty of abuse of power and the obstruction of Congress in his historic impeachment trial. Parasite has six Academy Award nominations and is the first film not in the English language to win Best Picture, winning four Oscars tonight. Welcome to ABC News Live. We have breaking news for you. Harvey Weinstein is heading to prison. Judge James Burke in New York City just delivered the sentence 23 years. Weinstein was eligible for anywhere between five and 29 then you had the federal, the New York Fed, come out injecting $1.5 trillion today and tomorrow in the repurchasing market. A lot of movement, and yet we still finished the day down, almost 10% lower for the Dow at 21,200 points. Look at the S&P, almost 10% as well, 9.5% uh, lower. Same thing with the Nasdaq, so complete negative territory. You guys all talked about it, but this is a historical day, the biggest drop we've seen since that crash in 1987. I was only two years old at that point. Across the country. What started as peaceful gatherings protesting the death of George Floyd devolved into destruction. From New York. In campaign 2020, it's official. Joe Biden is the Democratic presidential nominee. As seen live here on CBS3, he was formally nominated at the Democratic National Convention. We're watching this story. Several high profile Twitter accounts appear to have been hacked with comments posted about cryptocurrency. The hacked accounts include Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates. Elon Musk, Uber, and Apple. Many of the tweets have already been deleted. We have the latest now on Ghislaine Maxwell going before a judge for a bail hearing this morning as we learn incredible new details about her arrest. Eva Pilgrim is at the courthouse there in Brooklyn. Now to the hunt for the invasive species that has scientists on high alert. The so-called murder hornets arriving in the United States for the first time and experts are warning they could decimate bee populations across the U.S. Will Reeve is joining us now from Central Park with more on this, and Will, also concerning they've been known to kill people as well. Well, they were going to be negative for a long time. Uh, you better uh, you better own equities. You better own something other than 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 that. I mean, it, it it's remarkable what's happened in the last 10 years. I've been wrong. Uh, for a long time, you were a skeptic of Bitcoin and some cryptocurrencies, but you recently appear to have changed your mind about that. What happened? The great monetary inflation happened, and that made me begin to think about how do you want to be positioned in your portfolio going forward? So that's really what tripped my interest in, in Bitcoin. Um, and you have to realize, if you just think about, say, Bitcoin versus cash, right? Bitcoin, when I think of stores of value, I think of it four ways. Purchasing power, trustworthiness, liquidity, and portability. That, that's kind of the, the categories I put it in. So when it, comes to, when it comes to trustworthiness, Bitcoin's 11 years old. There's very little trust in it. We're watching the birthing of the store of value. And whether that succeeds or not, only time will tell. Simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. So we, you know, we as a central bank, we have the ability to create money uh, digitally. And we do that by buying treasury bills or, or bonds or other government guaranteed securities. And that, that actually increases the money supply. We also print actual currency and we distribute that through the Federal Reserve Bank. The Federal Reserve is a private entity and the Federal Reserve Bank's 2015 estimated net income was $100.2 billion. They then transferred approximately $97.7 billion of that to the U.S. Treasury. So that means they profit about $2.5 billion simply for going poof, there's your money. The stock market, you know you say it always goes up? It's like that 45 degree angle. Correct. 
1971, direct 45 degree angle, a couple of drops, whatever, but it's straight up. That's because it's denominated in dollars. They're just devaluing the dollar, right? right. The stocks go up. If you denominate that same stock market in gold, the stock market's down since 1970. It's all, the stock market is a complete scam in terms of accruing value. It's all the dollar being devalued. So it goes straight up 45 degree angle, but if you denominate it in ounces of gold, it's down. Hi, Julia. This year's Bitcoin rally is being driven by wealthy North Americans and long-term investors versus more active traders three years ago. Data firm Chainalysis analyzes public blockchain data to see where and how much people are buying. In 2017, the bulk of activity was coming from Asia. This year, though, there are more net inflows from Asia to U.S. exchanges. There are also some signs that more high net worth individuals and institutional investors are getting in. We've heard from big names like Paul Tudor Jones, Bill Miller, and Stan Druckenmiller backing Bitcoin recently, but it's also showing up in the numbers. Total accounts buying more than a million dollars worth of Bitcoin and then moving it off of exchanges has skyrocketed. In video from the day of the blast, you can see white flashes, what appear to be fireworks going off before the massive Korean government officials are playing down speculation of the health of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, saying he is alive and well. Kim has not been seen in public for more than two weeks, and there have been unconfirmed reports that he was seriously ill following heart surgery. Actor Chadwick Boseman died at the age of 43 following a private four-year battle with colon cancer. Bozeman inspiring millions with his roles, making seven movies while quietly undergoing surgeries and chemotherapy treatments. Tennessee, a massive tornado hitting. Laura slamming the Gulf Coast. 2020, shattering records around the world for some of the wildest weather ever recorded. Deadly wildfire. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died at the age of 87 due to complications from pancreatic cancer, according to the information that we are getting from the court. The court says that Ginsburg was sworn in from as an associate of justice back in 1993, appointed by Bill Clinton. She was the second woman to serve on the Supreme Court. She was the first Jewish woman to serve on the Supreme Court. All right, let's talk about Bitcoin. I do own a small amount of Bitcoin. There's simply nothing like Bitcoin. It's the only one. Take 1%, put in Bitcoin. You'll be very happy, my friend. You can't deny the success of Bitcoin this year. Maybe I should put some to work. Maybe you've convinced me. Now, let me just basically say how impressed I am with Ethereum, you know, full stop theory. Uh, and that when I think about this as a regulator, you know, I think of it, it almost uh, analogized to email versus the internet. If Bitcoin is email, you know, a one trick pony, so to speak, but obviously revolutionary, Ethereum goes far beyond that. It's more like the internet. And in the last few minutes, President Trump has tweeted saying that he and the First Lady have tested positive for COVID-19. Let's go straight to Los Angeles and our US correspondent, Greg Milam. Morning to you, Greg. I mean, we knew this was a possibility, but this is going to play really big in the States, isn't it? Rock legend Eddie Van Halen has died at 65 after a long battle with throat cancer. The rocker's son, Wolf, sharing the news on Twitter today, calling him the best father he could ever ask for. In fact, Wolf became the bassist for the group Van Halen in 2006. Eddie Van Halen reportedly diagnosed with cancer more than a decade ago. In 2012, he was voted number one of the 100 greatest guitarists of all time. What about, what about, what about an attack? Like, like the, you think about, you think about, no, you think about, you pull out your debit card, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, no one's debit card works. Oh, right? What's going to stop that from happening? What do you do with no money? Because mm. there's only 3% that's real cash. That's real, like, palpable. So if everybody wanted money. all the paper for all the money they have in the bank, we would never be able to do it. And it is now my great honor to introduce the president-elect of the United States of America, Joe Biden. Bitcoin has a lot of the characteristics of being an early investor in a tech company. And I didn't realize it until after, uh, unfortunately, I came on your show. 
and got besieged by God knows how many different people on Bitcoin. But very importantly, early next year, we're going to allow cryptocurrencies to be a funding source for any transaction happening on all 28 million of our merchants. And that will significantly bolster the utility of cryptocurrencies. Let's bring in Michael Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy. Michael, great to have you with us. Um, um, we, we had you on because you're the CEO of a software company who decided to invest your cash into Bitcoin. Uh, and I'm wondering how, how you came about that decision. Were you, were you thinking we've got a lot of cash because our business generates a lot of cash. So, you know, could it be treasuries or money market, straight up cash or Bitcoin? I mean, what was your thought process? Well, the story here is due to the rapid expansion of the monetary supply by the central banks, the cost of capital has tripled from 5% to 15% over the past year. And if we look out over the next four years, bond coupons and EPS growth rates are going to need to exceed that hurdle in order to preserve wealth. We had hundreds, 500 million worth of cash, but we knew we were going to generate another 500 million worth of cash. And we realized that if we held it in cash, it was going to debase by 10, 15% a year, and I didn't want to lose half of it. So what isn't so well understood is the BTC, Bitcoin is the best safe haven treasury reserve asset in the world right now. And it's engineered to be superior to gold in all aspects. So that, that being the case, a lot of people understand the asset story of Bitcoin. It's up 100% annually each year for the past decade, more or less. What they don't understand is that Bitcoin is a, it's a monetary network. And as a monetary network, it's capable of storing and channeling energy over time without power loss. So we got really excited about this idea and we saw it as a solution for the store of value problem not just for the 300 trillion dollars of capital in the world but for the seven and a half billion people right. on the planet tyler I'll, I'll start with you what have you been doing over the last eight months to accommodate this meteoric rise we've seen in bitcoin and have you been personally doubling down on your investment in bitcoin so we've just been hodling um our thesis is that bitcoin is gold 2.0 that it will disrupt gold and if it does that it has to have a market cap of nine trillion um, so we think that price is Bitcoin at, it could price one day at $500,000 of Bitcoin. So at $18,000 Bitcoin, it's, it's a hold, or at least if you don't have any, it's, it's a buy opportunity because we think there's a 25X from here. Bitcoin may well be a substitute for gold. We don't know that yet, but it's starting to behave that way. But is Bitcoin a substitute for the dollar? So uh, I think really what we are seeing and the, and the discussions we are having with the clients is that people are looking for portfolios that have a reasonable balance between risky assets and safe assets. And what is uh, happening is that the bucket that used to be a lot of U.S. fixed income is getting put into all kinds of other buckets, being gold, being Bitcoin or Chinese bonds to some degree, right? So there's sort of a shift out of that safe U.S. dollar assets that was the U.S. Treasury into a spectrum of other alternative safe assets. And Bitcoin is a part of that now. Former boss at Coinbase, the CEO, Brian Armstrong, um, sent out last week, and he said that the Treasury could be, quote, planning to rush out some new regulation regarding self-hosted crypto wallets before the end of the term. Is that true? Yeah, look, um, and Melissa, you know, rumors abound in Bitcoin more than almost any other place. What I would tell you is we're very focused on getting this right. We're very focused on not killing this. And it's equally important that we develop the networks behind Bitcoin and other cryptos as it is that we prevent money laundering and terrorism from happening. So believe me, there's a balance here and it's going to work for everybody. CC is preparing to sue that crypto startup for selling unlicensed securities. The asset in question here is called XRP. It's a cryptocurrency, much like Bitcoin. Uh, Ripple uses it for its clients, which are mostly businesses and banks, to send instant payments across borders. But there's two things that I want to say to the world. First of all, Bitcoin itself is an institutional grade safe haven asset, and it's engineered to be superior to gold in all respects. That makes it the ideal store of value solution to every individual institution corporation on Earth. The second thing is Bitcoin is the world's first digital monetary network. It's like Facebook or Google for money. 
It's, uh, it's the first network in the history of the world where you can collect and channel and store all the money in the world for 100 years and not lose any of it. That makes it 100 times bigger than big tech. Um, everybody needs to plug into it. Every individual, every corporation, every government's got a problem, which is how, how do they deal with a collapsing currency and what's their store of value? Bitcoin's the solution. Bitcoin, as you pointed out, is going up more than 100% a year. So the logical thing for every corporation to do is convert their balance sheet from USD to BTC. And the answer to your question is, Bitcoin's going to demonetize gold, negative yielding sovereign debt, low yielding sovereign debt, and all of the index funds that are being used as a store of value. There's 100 to 200 trillion dollars worth of stuff there. Like, this thing can go on for quite a while.